a little story with you guys today. Um, I was having a discussion with my brother's girlfriend last night, and you know, her experience really, really fascinated me, and all the things that she's gone through in her life just really, really fascinated me. And uh, she was telling me that she was raised by her dad. You know, he was, you know, single dad. You know, her mom was one of those deadbeat moms, you know, would rather hang out with her boyfriends than to take care of her kids. So she said her dad raised her. <clears throat> well, recently her dad passed away. Um, I think he had, like, liver cancer, liver failure or something like that. But he died uh, a year and a half ago. And uh, she was telling me how, uh, how she just was just she had to be put into like a, a mental institution because she had had a nervous breakdown and you know she couldn't you know she was suicidal and they were getting ready to put her son into a, a foster care and he was a newborn baby so you know just her getting over that was just a, 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 a triumph in itself um, but um, she was just talking about you know her dad and how he was and how he loved toys and you know how they would always go to like these toy stores and stuff like that and even she said even as, as we got older we would always go to these toy stores and we'd play around in the toy stores and shoot each other in the toy stores and we just we just had a great time together Erica she's just like you know I just loved my dad and I'm like yeah I bet you miss him a lot and she told me she says I really don't get the chance to miss him a lot because she says he always comes around. And I'm like, what? And she was like, Erica, she says, I know what I'm about to say to you may sound a little weird, but, you know, it is what it is. She says, you know, my dad's spirit lingers in my apartment, you know. And, you know, I wasn't really surprised because I, I, I believe in that kind of stuff. But, um, and I said, well, do you have a problem with that? I said, because that is your dad. She was like, you know, I'm embarrassed to say it, but I am kind of scared. And I, I said, because she says, I think that, like, you know, in a way that he's haunting me. And I'm like, no, that's, I'm, and, I, you know, I was trying to tell her, I said, no, that's dad. You know, dad's not going to haunt you. I said, his presence may be around, and he may fiddle, faddle, and fuck with shit, <clears throat> but he's definitely not there to haunt you or to scare you. And, um... And I was telling her that my great-grandmother would always say to me that if spirits sense that you are afraid of them, you know, then they'll back off a little bit. And I said that, you know, if you feel like you're afraid, I said, just say out loud, you know, Dad, you know, uh, I appreciate you coming around, but you frighten me. And I said, he'll probably back off, but he won't go away. But he'll back off so that his presence isn't felt so blatantly. And I was like, well, what are some of the things that he does? And she says, Erica, she says, some of the things that he does is so on a regular basis that it really, really bothers. It's, she says it starts to bother me after a while. She says, like my son, her, her son's name is Juwan, and he's one. He's like one and a half. He's a really, really small baby. He's just learning how to walk. But anyway, she says that Juwan cries a whole lot when it's time for him to go to bed. So <clears throat> what she'd do is she'd put him in his room and put him in his crib and just let him cry himself to sleep or whatever. And, you know, and Juwan is kind of afraid of the dark just like any other child so when she turns off the light he just starts screaming louder 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 and she said that you know she's learned how to turn it off and she just get in the bed and go to sleep but you know she'd be, wake up because the lights would be on in this room so you know she's just like oh god please stop turning on these lights and she says that her dad does that all the time when Jawan starts crying and acting crazy in his crib she says that her dad will turn the lights on and she said another thing that my dad does is because of his love of toys, I can hear him rummaging around in Juwan's toy box. You know, she says I can hear him pushing buttons and squeaking on stuff. And, and she says that it gets kind of annoying. Uh, you know, she says because, you know, it kind of startles her a little bit. She says she doesn't get scared, but she says she gets kind of startled, you know, when she hears, you know, stuff turning on and, and, and toys making noise and stuff glowing in there because she knows that, you know, her dad is like playing with her son's toys or whatever. And I'm just like, you know what, I said, that's your dad. You know what I'm saying? He's going to come around you because you were his only child. You know, he raised you and you got a grandson. But yeah, I said, he's going to come around. But I told her, I said, do that thing that my great grandmother told me to do because um, it really does work. It really does work because I had... Um, uh, uh, instance growing up that kind of frightened me, startled me, and uh, I remember how I felt 
and I remember every emotion. I remember just being just petrified, and and I re remember my, my 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 grandmother's words at the same time, and it really helped. Um, my dad had a friend that committed suicide, and although me and him weren't really really close, he had lived with us for a few months till he got on his feet. So we would spend like four o'clock in the morning listening to records and just having a good time and talking about movies. So we did develop like a closeness, you know the you know just my dad's friend and the daughter type closeness or whatever. But anyway, um, after he had committed suicide, uh, I remember him coming to me in a dream, hold on one second, the dream vividly, and I remember uh, standing in my parents' window in the dream, and I'm watching him walk up the street. And I remember being so petrified at just his, just watching him walk up the street because I knew he was dead. I knew he was dead. And, you know, I, I, I just, I was so, 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 so scared to the point that I was getting ready to start crying. Because I knew, I, I, some, some way in the back of my mind I thought that he was coming after me to come get me, to take me with him, or to eat me up. I don't know what I was thinking about at the time. But I remember uh, watching him walk up the street and when he got to the driveway I guess he sensed that I was afraid and he turned around and just kept walking and I was so relieved I was so so relieved when he kept walking because I was like uh -uh, I can't handle this I can't handle this so that was one and another thing I had a dream this was recently well not necessarily recently but um, I was about 25 and I remember um, back then I used to walk a lot. I was in better shape, believe it or not. But I used to go to the park and I used to speed walk or whatever. And I remember dreaming that I'm, you know, walking at the park and I'm speed walking and stuff at this really pretty park. And then this lady comes up and she walks next to me and she's like, you mind if I walk with you? And I'm like, no, I don't mind at all. So we speed walking together and, you know, she was asking me my name and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, we were talking and laughing and having a good time or whatever. And I never did ask her her name. But uh, the one thing that I found weird about her was when her hands came in sight, she had these distinctive hands that I remember. They were really small and they were kind of green. And I automatically knew who she was. She was like uh, one of my childhood friends who died of leukemia. And she died when she was like seven years old. Um, and the one thing I remember about her hands was at her funeral, when we were viewing the body, I asked my dad, I said, what's wrong with her hands? Why does her hands look so weird like that? And he was like, well, baby, that's what happens when you die. And that night when I went home, I can hear my parents kind of like, you know, that funeral home did a butcher job on that baby. Did you see how fucked up that baby's hands were and how green her face was? They they did a, they, Janice should, 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 go off on them for messing her baby up like that and I heard them arguing and so you know fast forward to this dream that I had recently I just remembered the hands on this woman and I was kind of thinking to myself oh that's kind of cool Missy came to me in her current self and I guess how she would be if she was you know 27 28 because anyway to make a long story short after I tell all of those stories and situations I don't do ghosts. I don't do spirits. I don't do apparitions. I don't do nothing. So, all of my family members and friends that passed on, please y'all listen to me good. Y'all wait till I get there. Okay? Peace.